Myself, P. Abhirami, working as assistant professor in Tripoli department, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology, deemed to be university. This video lecture is about the energy band diagram of PN junction diode. First, we should know what do you mean by a PN junction diode. So, when we are combining a P-type material and N-type material together, the holes from P-type material move towards the N-type material because of its higher concentration region to lower concentration region movement. Similarly, the electrons from N-type material move towards the P-type material to satisfy that diffusion process. Diffusion process is nothing but the charge carriers move from higher concentration to lower concentration region. So, due to that movement, the holes will leave the immobile path negative ions near the junction. Similarly, the electrons that is n-type material will leave the immobile positive ions near the junction. So, this positive ion and negative ion will constitute a depletion region. So, when a P material and n-type material is combined together, a depletion region is formed near the junction of the PN diode. So, next we will see about the equilibrium condition of this PN diode under thermal uh, that is stable thermal condition. So, when the P type material and N type material joined together, I told you that the electrons from N type material move towards the P type material. So, in our P type material, the moved electrons will occupy the conduction band. Similarly, the holes from P type material moves from uh, this P region to N region, these holes occupy the valence band in this N type material. So, there happened a shift in our energy band diagram. That shift is mainly due to the movement of electrons from N type material to the conduction band and movement of holes from P type material to the valence band in the N type material. So, this shift will definitely should be overcome by us. So, in order to overcome this shift, we are going for some detailed structure of this energy band diagram. So, in this detailed structure, we can see towards that depletion region only the shift is happening. So, in order to overcome this shift, we are going to calculate the energy potential of the electron. So, this energy potential is represented by E naught. So, towards the P type material, we can consider the shift in the energy level is given by E1 and towards the N type material we can consider the shift in the energy level is given by E2. So, when we want to find out this energy potential of any charge carrier, we can say E naught is equivalent to E1 plus E2. So, why we are going to overcome this shift means under stable condition. So, I want the Fermi level of this energy band diagram to a constant one. So, what do you mean by Fermi level is the maximum energy occupied by any charge carrier under 0 Kelvin that is termed as Fermi level. So, under thermal equilibrium, we want to make this Fermi level as a constant line. So, to overcome this, we are finding out this E naught equal to E1 plus E2. So, from the diagram, you can see. So, E naught, we have written this as E1 plus E2. So, now I want to find out the value of E1 from the diagram. So, how we can find out E1 here? So, we know the intrinsic semiconductor occupies half of the energy gap in our energy band diagram. So, what do you mean by half of energy gap? Half of energy gap is nothing but already we know the energy gap is defined as the difference between conduction band and the valence band. So, half of the region means it will occupy the middle of our energy band diagram. So, we can find the E1 value as half of Eg minus that difference in the energy level. So, difference in the energy level is given by Ef minus Evp. So, Ef is nothing but the constant Fermi level line and Evp is the valence band of P type material energy level. So, we can write E1 equal to half Eg minus of Ef minus Evp. Similarly, we can go for E2. How we can find out E2? So, E2 can be given as similarly half Eg minus of 
ECN minus EF. So why we are considering ECN minus EF here means ECN is of higher energy level and EF is lower energy level. So we are getting the equation as E2 equal to half EG minus half ECN minus EF. So what is our E0 now? E0 is given as E1 plus E2. So if you are adding these two, these two equations, you will get E0 equal to half EG minus EF minus EVP plus half EG minus ECN minus EF. So this half EG plus half EG becomes EG. So we got the equation for E0 as E0 equal to EG minus EF minus EVP minus of ECN minus EF. So in this equation we are going to find out these terms differently that is separately. So the first one we are going to find out EF minus EVP term. So for finding out this we are considering the concentration of holes in a valence band. So what is that equation? So P is given as P equivalent to NV into E power minus EF minus EVP divided by KT. So in this equation small p represents the concentration of holes. So NV is nothing but the constant which represents the energy level of valence band. And this EF minus EVP gives the difference in the energy levels. K is nothing but the Boltzmann constant and T is the absolute temperature. So from this equation you can get the value of EF minus EVP. So how we can get that means you have to take natural log on both the sides. So when we are taking natural log on both the sides we can get the equation as EF minus EVP equal to KT into natural log of NV divided by small p we will get. So but we already know in a p-type semiconductor the concentration of holes is equivalent to the concentration of acceptor atoms. So we can write this equation as EF minus EVP equal to KT into natural log of NV divided by NA. So you consider this as equation number 4. So next we will move on to the next term that is nothing but ECN minus EF. So for finding out this we have to consider the concentration of electrons in the conduction band. So it is represented by the equation small n equal to NC into E power minus of ECN minus EF divided by KT. So this small n represents the concentration of holes. NC is nothing but the constant which represents the energy level of conduction band. And this ECN minus EF represents difference in the energy levels. K is the Boltzmann constant and T is the absolute temperature. So from this equation also if you want to find out the value of EF, ECN minus EF we have to take natural log on both the sides. While taking the natural log on both the sides you will get the equation as ECN minus EF equal to KT into natural log of NC divided by small n we will get it. So but here also we know that small n that is the concentration of electrons in a n type semiconductor is given by the concentration of donor atoms. So we can write the equation as ECN minus EF equal to KT into natural log of NC divided by ND. You consider this as equation number 5. So next we are going to find out the term EG in our equation. So EG can be represented as um, by considering the mass action law. So what do you mean by mass action law? The concentration of the electrons into the concentration of holes will be equivalent to Ni square. Here Ni is the intrinsic concentration. By using this mass action law we are going to find out the value of Eg. So here for N into P we are going to multiply the concentration of electrons in conduction band and concentration of holes in valence band and we are equating that to Ni square. While multiplying this you will get the equation as Nc into Nv into E power minus of ECN minus minus EVP divided by KT. So that will be equivalent to Ni square. So to find the value of EG, so we have to consider ECN minus EVP is nothing but the difference in the conduction band and the valence band. So we know that the difference between conduction band and valence band is nothing but energy gap. So in place of ECN minus EVP, we can replace it by EG itself. So you will get the equation as E power minus EG divided by KT equal to 
n i square divided by n c into n v. So, from this we want to find the value of e g. For that you have to take natural log on both the sides. While we are taking natural log on both the sides, we will get e g will be equivalent to k t into natural log of n c into n v divided by n i square. You take this as equation number 6. So, now we are going to substitute equation number 4, 5 and 6 in equation number 2. So, equation number 2 is nothing but e naught equal to e g minus of e f minus e v p minus of e c n minus e f. When we are substituting this, we will get the equation as e naught equal to. So, the k t term is common in all the three terms. So, you can take it outside. And similarly, natural log is also common. So, we can take the equation as e naught equal to k t into natural log of n c into n v divided by n i square into n a divided by n v into n d divided by n c. So, we can cancel the terms n c and n v both in the numerator and the denominator. So, we will get the equation as e naught equal to k t into natural log of n d into n a divided by n i square. So, n d is the concentration of donor atoms, n a is the concentration of acceptor atoms. So, we can say the energy level shift in the energy band diagram is given by this equation. So, it depends mainly on the concentration of donor atom and the acceptor atom and on the uh, intrinsic concentration parameters. So, up to this we have find out the energy potential of any charge carrier. If you want to find out the voltage of this charge carrier, we have to divide that equation by Q. So, we can write V naught is given by E naught divided by Q. So, that equation is given as e V naught equal to 1 by Q into kt natural log of N d into N a divided by N i square. So, up to this we have see, seen about the energy band diagram of P n diode. In the next video lecture series, we can go for the different special semiconductor devices or special P n diodes we are using in our day to day life. Thank you.